Hello and welcome to the same page setup and initial training webinar. This webinar is geared towards training the individuals who will be initially setting up and administrating same page. This is a longer webinar that has a lot of information so stop and rewind if something moves too quickly. I'm going to initially start by showing you how you get logged into same page, how you install same page and get ready to start using it. From our website samepagemusic.com you can go to the account logins to log in if you already have an account or hit create account if you do not already have an account. I'm going to click on account login and go to login here. This is going to take me to betaplan.samepagemusic.com. You can access this directly from any browser by just typing in betaplan.samepagemusic.com. This will take you directly to the login interface where you can put in your username and password to start using SamePage. I'm going to click on the install option down here below. This installs what we call the outer browser application or installs same page as a local application. Hit install when this message comes up and you'll see the window pop up on top. I'm going to close out the browser window behind this. We're now running the out of browser same page right here. It looks like a desktop application. You'll notice that on the desktop right over here, we now have a same page icon and you can access the logon interface for same page directly from that desktop uh, icon. It makes it very easy to use, very easy to get into same page, and it can be run in offline mode as well so you don't have to have the internet to log in and start using same page. This is the main login interface uh, where you use your username and password to log in. Typically your username is going to be your email address. It can be something else though. If you've forgotten your password, there is a forgot password link. And then there's also an on-screen keyboard on and off toggle here in case you're using this from the station, performance station, and need to turn on the on-screen keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and put in the username and password to get logged in so we can get started. Check the remember password option if you want to just be able to click in, uh, click on your avatar to log in when you get in initially. You'll see it downloading at the bottom right as it downloads the data for the first time. And if you do see this register this device window pop up, uh, click cancel on that if you're just administrating same page. Play licenses are used for performance stations. So I'm going to hit cancel on that. As soon as I get logged in, it immediately takes me to the welcome to same page startup wizard. Uh, at the end of this webinar, I will recommend that you go back, start same page again, and go through this wizard in its entirety. Uh, starting with the, the position wizard. These, all these steps do need to be completed. Uh, I'm going to show you where they are in the software and kind of explain them into more detail. Um, but it is easier to get to them through this interface right here, this startup wizard um, at the initial. So I'm, I'm just going to click skip on this. I'm going to check show this next time so that next time I show uh, same page it does come back up again. This is the main home screen for same page. Most of your information that you need to see, a lot of the tools you need to access can be accessed from here. This is what we call planner mode, the mode where you set up same page, where you uh, plan your events, where you manage people, where you contact people. All this occurs through this interface right here. At the top menu, you'll see the navigation icons that take you through the different pieces. Again, we'll go through each one of these in detail. The home screen here has four items, uh, four most commonly accessed items that you can use. The calendar, my schedule, my message board, and then also playlists. Any one of these items, if you click on the top bar, it will make them full screen so that they're easier to see. And so that you can manage those items. If we click on the calendar here, you can see obviously the days in July and the events that are scheduled for those different days. If we click on those events, it will load those events and take us to the planner. I'm going to wait on that until we get to the events segment. My schedule is going to show the events that you have been scheduled for, the individual that's currently logged in. I had to check show past schedule to show things that I've been scheduled for in the past. That can be helpful for understanding where you've used somebody. If I uncheck that, you can see that I currently don't have anything that I'm scheduled for. 
playlists show lists of songs only that can be loaded. Those are not events. Those are just a list of songs only. And then the message board is accessible from right here. This is an extraordinarily powerful feature that I want to bring some attention to and show you some of the amazing things you can do with the message board. You can see some existing messages here. I'm going to click on new message. This is for contacting groups or, or everyone in your database. I'm going to put in, this is a test message. This is a test message. Down at the bottom here, you can see who you want to receive this. This is where it gets particularly interesting. You can send it to everyone, everyone that's managed inside same page. If you click on member, you can see here you're able to select one person that you want to contact. And this is through email or text message or both if they're both active. You can select a position group. For example, if you want to contact the band only. Or you can select a position. If I select piano here and I send this message, that's going to send this message out to everyone that is assigned to the piano position. So all your piano players or um, all your bass players, whatever it may, may be. And then get involved, send feedback, send a message to us if you would like to send same page a message. I'm going to send this to one member here and post message. You can see it shows up on the message board, so when Mark logs in, he will see it. And Mark also just received a text message and an email uh, with that message. So it's a very powerful feature that can uh, eliminate a lot of time spent contacting people for, for various reasons you may need to contact them for. I'm going to jump right into positions. If you click on your positions icon up here at the top and talk about position groups, positions, and what they are. A lot of same page management and scheduling is centered around positions. A positions are, is a role in an event that needs to be filled. For example, in the Friday night band, you may need a drummer, and that drummer position can be filled by John, Sarah, or Mark. And we'll get into setting up the members here in a little bit. But if you go into band here, you can see we already have some positions set up for you. In your new account, you will have a band position group. Uh, and then this basic set of positions that will already be set up there that most people need. A position group, obviously, is just a logical grouping of, of individual positions that are needed. If you want to create a new position, we have a Create New Position button right here that launches the Add New Position wizard. This is the same wizard that shows up on the initial Welcome to Same Page Setup wizard. First thing you do when you're adding a new position is select the group you want it to go inside. Right here you can see I can select any group. Down here under Existing Positions, you can see what positions are already set up. I'm going to go back and select Band. Don't type anything into this field right here unless you want to add a new group. This will not add a new position. That is just a new group. So most instances, you'll leave that blank. Here I want to add a cello position to my band. If I have a, a cello player that I want to be able to fill, I'm going to hit Next. On this second and final screen, there's two things that are, are selected here. One is the content type that you want this position to see. That content type could be chord sheet. Chord sheet music is a very common type of music that you may want a position to receive if they use a station or log in through same page practice. Or it could be any one of the items in here. I'm going to select cello because we obviously want the cello player to receive cello music if it's available for a song. And then selecting a location where this position will be filled. Your cello player may be in the main room. They may play in the band that's in the gym. We'll talk about locations a little bit later, but for most setups, there will usually only be one location, and you shouldn't have to change this. I'm going to leave it at the default and hit Finish. You can now see I have a cello position that's added and been filled, and the back-end setup has also been done showing where that position is going to be used and also what type of content that position will receive. If you click on your Members Navigation icon at the top, this is going to show you your Members panel. Members are anyone that you want to manage, schedule, or contact with SamePage. Members log into SamePage stations. They can access the music library. They can be scheduled for events and can be contacted by email or text through SamePage. 
A member could be someone that uses a performance station on stage, or it could simply be someone that you just want to be able to send a group message to. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, someone that's playing an instrument only. You can see the existing members that you have here. I'm going to click on Add Member right there to bring up the Add New Member Wizard. It's going to ask for a first name, last name. When you confirm the email addresses, one thing to take note of is that the email address of the member will also be their username. If you put in their mobile phone here, it'll add their mobile phone into that member's information. And if you select a carrier, I'm going to select AT&T, for example, for the mobile phone, that will enable text messaging for that individual. Putting in a mobile phone only will not enable text messaging. If you put in a mobile phone and carrier, then that member will be able to receive messages and notifications via text messages. a very powerful feature. When you hit Next, it will ask you to assign a position to this member. You know, what does this member do? What role do they fill in your organization? Since we just added the cello position, I'm going to go in here and say John Smith plays cello. If you do not see the position that you need for this member, there is a button right there that will start the add position wizard. On the third and final page, this is where you assign a practice license to a member. A practice license is what allows an individual to log in from anywhere, access the music database, annotate music. Uh, they can do all sorts of things inside the practice license that allow them to access your music from somewhere besides uh, at, at a performance station. You can see assign practice license is checked. If you do not want to assign them a practice license, just uncheck that. That can be changed later. This is just an easy, easy access place to do that. I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked right there. Hit finish and start over if you want to restart the wizard, if you have a lot of people to add, or just one. Hit finished. Now, as soon as I hit finish, the view edit member window is going to pop up where you can see all of the information for this member and everything you may need to know. You can add additional information here, such as their address. Their team uh, security level is set by default to team member. A team member cannot change anything in the system except their availability. If you want them to be able to create playlists, events, so on and so forth, you can change their security level here, but they are by default created as a team member. You can say see under username. Their email address is also their username. Under My Schedule, John's not been scheduled for any events yet. You would be able to see those if he had been scheduled. And then also Assigned Positions. You can assign someone to multiple positions, and that can be edited right there. So everything we did, did in the wizard can be changed at a later point through this Edit View Member window. And then you can also see the two contact methods that are available, mobile phone and email. Because both are marked as active, Whenever a message is sent to John, he will receive an email and a text. That can be changed by going edit, which allows you to edit any information in there, and unchecking that. I'm going to leave both checked for now. The member can also change their password through this window right now. Whenever you uh, create a new member, they're going to receive an email that will have an auto-generated password in it. I do recommend going in here and changing their password to something generic and simple that you can remember uh, so that it's not forgotten easily. Members can also set their availability right here where they can say, I'm currently unavailable to be scheduled for any position. The new availability will also allow you to set a custom availability, meaning this Saturday all day I will be unavailable. Under options, there's a little bit more detailed information such as can become leader. That's for play and practice. Use movable playlist in the play and practice mode. And show menu labels. You generally shouldn't have to change anything with that. That view edit member window can be accessed by double clicking on a member or hitting edit. 
members can be deleted out by simply hitting the delete icon there. If you have a large number of members, you can search up here by name and title. So I can search by John. And you can see I have two members with the name John. Or you can search by position. And if you type in a position name, the people that are assigned to it will come up. So we just added cello position. I'm going to type in cello, and you can see that there's only one member assigned to that cello position right now. I'm going to click on the events tab and start going through events here. This is the events window where you pick an event that you want to create or manage or that you want to create a song list for. An event is a calendar item that occurs on a date and time that you can schedule members for, create a song list for, and it shows up on the calendar. Now, I do want to make one thing clear at the outset here. There are two ways to create a list of songs in the same page. You can create an event that, like I just mentioned, is a comprehensive calendar item that has a list of songs, or you can create a playlist only. A playlist is just a list of songs, and the two are not the same thing. I'll show that in a little bit more detail here in a moment. I just want to mention that at the outset. To create a new event, click on the New Event button at the top. I'm going to type in the event name. Select a date being this coming Friday night. Select a time by clicking on the clock. And then clicking Next. In the last pane here, you'll see there's a location where the event occurs. And then there's also Edit Reoccurrence. Edit Reoccurrence is going to be very important for people who have an event that occurs every night or every morning at the same time. Example, weekly on Sunday. I'm going to click Edit Reoccurrence. Suppose this Friday night event occurs every night on Friday night. I'm going to drop this down, select Weekly, select Friday, and note that the event will go indefinitely into the future. If this is only going to occur for the next 14 or so Fridays, I could go in here and say it's going to reoccur for the next 14 occurrences, save, and close. You now see under recurring events that I have the Friday night event with all the data that I set up. And I can now load the event to make it the active event that I'm working on. As soon as you load an event, it'll take you to the planner page. And take careful note of the event that's loaded right here. Current event is Friday night, 7-13-2012. It's very important to watch that line right there because if you have another event or that same event on another date loaded, it will schedule people and add songs for that event that you have loaded. So you do want to watch that and make sure you're in the right event when you're working on that. I'm going to go to the home screen and bring up the calendar real quick to show you what this looks like on the calendar. You can see here the Friday night event on the 13th occurs first, 20th, 27th, and you can see it continuing in the future until it ends on the 12th of October after 15 occurrences, 14 occurrences. In the events window, only the initial event that I create shows up. And you note it doesn't show up under future events yet. In order for an event, a recurring event to show up under future events, you do have to click on the event and that's then created. So if I click on the August the 3rd event, it'll load the August the 3rd event from the calendar. And now if I go under events, I now see a Friday night August the 3rd event. Again, that event is not created to show up under future events until I click on it in the calendar. I'm going to go back and load the Friday night event again. So we're working on the 713 event. One last thing in the events pane, there is a practice icon here that launches us into practice mode. We'll look at that at the very end so that you can practice music. Members will also be able to do this. I'm going to click on the planner navigation icon. This takes me to the planner where I can see positions for this event, positions that need to be filled. 
You can see I only have one bass player that's available, only one cello player that's available, but I have several drummers that can be scheduled, several electric guitarists, and so on and so forth. If a member has been set to unavailable, they will show up as red here so that you know on this date and time, Doug is not available to play electric guitar. Helps with scheduling purposes. To schedule someone for a position, simply click on the circle there. I'm going to schedule a group of people for this event. Once I've scheduled them, I can hit send notifications to notify them that they've been scheduled for this event. You can see here there is a custom message that's already filled out that will go out in the text or email. This email was sent by Mark Craig, so on and so forth. I can take that out and put in whatever I want. You can see that the notification will be sent to everyone who has been scheduled here, the position that they've been scheduled for. And when I hit send a notification, that will immediately go out. Everyone who's been scheduled just received an email and text message notifying them they've been scheduled for this Friday night event to play the position they're marked for. The yellow circle indicates that they've been scheduled, but they've not responded. When someone responds to the notification and says that they can be there, these circles will turn to green, indicating that they will be able to fill that position. If someone declines to fill a position and hits decline in the notification email, it will turn to red, indicating that that need, position does need to be reassigned to someone else. I want to cover real quickly the Teams and the Save icon and what those do. The Save icon takes this configuration of people or this group of people and saves them as a team. You may have certain groups of people that work together in a team and you don't want to have to schedule them individually for each set. If this is team A or team one, this specific uh, group of people here, I can hit save and you'll notice it will save these positions being filled by these people as a team name. I'm gonna say this is team A. I now have a team of these people. Now, if I go to a different event, we already created the Friday night event here and load that. You can see I now need to schedule these people again. If I want that same team of people to be used on this Friday night, I'll go to Teams. I'll select Team A that I just created, and I'll apply the team. And you'll see that all these positions have now been filled with the same setup that I had on the other one. And I can, again, hit send notifications, put in a custom message, and send that out to those same people. If you have large teams, this can save a lot of time with scheduling people. Now that we have an event loaded, we want to create a song list or a set list for this event. If I click on songs here, this is going to take you to the song library. I want to show you how to add a new song real quickly here. If you click on your new song icon, you can put in the song title. Select the song key. And then the browse for the files that you want to upload into the song. I'm going to select two files here. I want to upload a lead sheet, a violin part, and a chord sheet for this song. You can see here when I select multiple files to upload, it automatically names them based on the file name. So it can be very helpful if you name your files well before importing them in. The system also looks at the, the title of the file to try and determine what type of music it is. If the system cannot determine what type of music it is, you will want to change it over here from unknown to violin one so that the system now knows that this is violin music. Anyone filling the violin position that's been assigned violin music will receive that music here. This also tells the system what key that music is in. It does not change the key in the music. It simply tells our system what key the music is in. If I hit save and create, 
it will upload this song into the system. I'm going to hit cancel for the sake of time. If you have an event loaded, you can immediately start hitting the green plus button to the right of songs. And you can see it add into the playlist on the left. I'm going to add a grouping of songs in here. This is dynamically saving the playlist as we add songs here. If you double click on a song, it's going to bring up the edit view song window. This song right here only has one piece of content that you can see. This was imported as a text-based document, a rich text format, so that the system was able to detect the keys and transpose the song into all 12 keys. If you click on one of the keys, it will open up the content preview window. This is the text editor. So you can see here I can edit this song, change chords, or add any number of things in here. It has a full featured text editing tool set up at the top. I'm going to hit cancel since we don't want to make any changes to that. I'm going to bring up another song here that gives an example of a song with multiple parts. You can see here this song actually has 26 parts for all the different instruments to it. This is one of the things that makes Same Page powerful in its ability to manage many parts of music for multiple songs with ease. You can see here the content type is set to unknown. It's very important that the content type is set so that the system knows which Same Page station or person to send this to. I'll say this is timpani music. It's the default. The default means that music will go to someone if they don't know what music they're supposed to receive. They can't always select a different piece of music. And I'm going to save that there. Now, the Add Content icon right here allows you to add new content into a song. If you've added a song or uploaded a song that only has one piece of content and you want to add a new piece of content, the correct way to do it is to open up the add, Edit View Song window and click Add Content. This will allow you to browse for the file to wherever the file is located and add that into the song. The song information that we saw in the initial song wizard can also be edited through the song information icon there. If you want to use themes to categorize songs, you can click on the themes icon to the right of the green plus, and you'll be able to assign this song to one or multiple themes. When you're in player practice mode, themes can allow you to easily bring up lists or categories of songs that are in a similar category, such as Hope, Love, Mark Condon, so on and so forth. Now that we have a list of songs added into our playlist, I want to talk briefly about the playlist, how it works, and some of the things you can do with the playlist. If you click on any one of the songs in this playlist, you can move them up or down using the green arrow. And you can also preview the content or launch the Edit View Song window by clicking on the Preview icon there if you want to see what specific type of content there is. or you can take a song out of the playlist by clicking on the red X. The icons down at the bottom, I want to talk through what those do here. This add icon will add a header or an item into the song. I'm going to put in just some test items here to show you what that looks like. This is typically used for just text-based uh, order, order information to help people understand the flow of the event. So if I add that in, you'll see a header here. I'm going to put that at the very top. Now I'm going to add an item. That'll go at the very bottom. We have two songs, a header and an item. The print preview will open up a set order preview list. This can be printed off that will show you the, the event and the location. It'll show you the header, a few songs, and then an item. That can be printed off to give to people who need a printed copy of the event order. These two icons right here, Copy Playlist and Load Playlist. It's very important to understand what these do. 
this does not save the playlist. The, sa the playlist does dynamically save as you're creating it. The copy playlist takes the items in the playlist and saves them as a playlist only. Like we talked about early, earlier, an event is a calendar item that can have a song list for it. It's not just a playlist. And then a playlist is a list of songs only. Again, what that save button is doing is it's taking the list of items in this event and saving it as a playlist only. This can be valuable if you have multiple events that you're scheduling that are going to have the same set list, and you don't want to create that set list mul multiple times. Perhaps you want to load one event, create the set list once, save it as a playlist, and then using the load playlist icon, you can load that playlist into another event. Clear playlist will take all of the items out of the playlist if something's incorrect and you want to start from scratch. To finish this webinar up, I want to show you just real briefly where a few items are that we're not going to cover in any detail at all, but just want to make them aware. If you click on options, there's some items in there that you can use to manage different aspects of same page. You can manually sync name your mixed channels, look at templates, manage locations, content types, so on and so forth. The practice icon is going to take you into same page practice mode so that you can view the music for your event. If you click on the plan mode, that will take you back into the planner mode. At the very top right here, you'll see a My Account button. The most common option accessed in here is the licensing tab. This licensing tab allows you to see the practice licenses that you have and also who they're assigned to. You can see down here when we created John Smith that assigned him this practice license. Below are your play licenses that will be assigned to performance stations. Typically those won't need to be changed once they're initially set up. This covers a basic overview of the setup of same page and everything in it. Again, after you've come this far, I encourage you to close out same page, reopen it, log in again, and go through the main setup wizard. I'm actually going to do that right now just to show you what you would be looking at. You'll see there's the saved login from where we logged in earlier. We're going to hit cancel on registering. And here we are at the main setup wizard again. Again, once you've come this far and learned a little bit about how same page works and kind of gone through the brief overview, I encourage you to go back in, starting with the position wizard, make sure all your positions have been added and created, and then go through the rest of the wizards. The member and the position wizard will be the most important. You may not need to modify the locations. That will get you started using same page. Thank you for your time.